Hey there. Today, I would like to show you another set of star constellations. Most notably the ones around the North Pole. I'm gonna have a look at Ursa Minor and you'll learn how to find the North Star. I'm going to have a look at Ursa Major and the Big Dipper at the Dragon. And over here, both these. All right. Would say let's start with this one. There's a minor. It's fourteen and twenty-one. can tell I've had this book for a while. The edges of the pages are actually changing color. That's all right. I've used it quite a lot. Okay. So, just like last time, we have two pictures of the night sky showing exactly the same part of the night sky. And over here, we have an illustration of the different constellations with the names of the constellations and some information on the different stars and other objects. And over here, we see the constellations as we would see them from Earth. So this is the first one that we want to look at. Urza Minor it means little bear. And again, the brightest star in the constellation is called Alpha. It's here. And this star is called Polaris. Polaris. This is the North Star. So if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you're going to see different stars depending on the season. They're all going to move around the night sky. But this star here stays almost exactly in place. So if you know how to find this one, you know how to find North. Let's see what the constellation looks like. Down here, here, down here. Kocha, Erkant, like this. So from Polaris, down here, here. And then these aren't very bright, I think it's this one here. And as you can see, it looks a little bit like the Big Dipper. Just this part here is bent in the other direction. Down here is the Big Dipper. Now, I think 
this one is really easy to find just have a look I'm sure you'll see it and if you're able to see the Big Dipper all you need to do is draw an imaginary line from the last two stars here and you get to Polaris just like that you find the Big Dipper and continue until you get to Polaris as you see the other stars around here aren't too bright so it actually stands out a bit I'm sure you'll find it and I didn't know this but if you're from Alaska I think you'll already be familiar with how to find a North Star because this is the flag of Alaska here's the Big Dipper and here upwards is the line to Polaris it's a beautiful flag I think Right, but we were still talking about Ursa Minor The little bear Historically, this wasn't always its own constellation Probably because it's not too bright and not too noticeable In fact, for a long time, people saw it as the wings of the dragon of Draco. Draco's here. Moving around Ursa Minor. Going to have a look at it later. For now I want to start with Ursa Major. You might wonder, is this called Ursa Major or is it called the Big Dipper? These are actually two different things. The Big Dipper is only this constellation here. But in fact, the Big Dipper is not an official constellation. It's called an asterism. So a constellation of stars that people identify as its own image but it's not used in astronomy the actual constellation is called Ursa Mayor and is a bit bigger now let's have a look these stars are so bright that all of them have their own names Bennett Nash, Arco, Misa, Arliof, Megas, Vecta, Merak, Tupe. This one's the brightest. Here's the Alpha. And then continues. Let's see. These aren't very bright. I think it's up here. I think it's this one down there and back here. This is the head of the bear. Am I going down here and here? Down here and back up. So this is the body of the bear and then here we have its legs
In German, this is called Großer Bär. So, big bear using the masculine form, but it's actually, as you can see here, the A in the name indicates that it's a female bear. And there's a story to it. People think it's the nymph Callisto. She had a child from a Zeus called Arcas. And Hera got very angry and changed her into a bear. And Arcas, when he grew up, found this bear, didn't know it was his mother, and hunted it. But Zeus saved them and put them both in the night sky as Ursa Major for Callisto and Portis for Arcas, her son. And this is often the case with stars and mythology. There's another story that says that Hera cursed the bear to never reach the ocean. And that's probably because it's so far north that in ancient Greece it was visible all year round and never touched down on the horizon. So it was always up in the night sky. But it's not going to be forever. Everything is moving and in about 4,000 years Ursa Maya will dip below the horizon in summer and will not be visible again for a while. And if we're looking at an even longer time frame, the shape of the Big Dipper is going to change too. Today, this is what it looks like. But the thing is that, I'll show you on the other side, these stars here are all part of one very loose cluster. They were probably born together in the same area and they're all moving in the same direction. But Dube and Binet Nash, these two, are not part of this group of stars and they're moving in different directions. So, 100,000 years ago, this is what the Big Dipper looked like. And 100,000 years into the future, you can see that Bennett Nash is moving down here. And Dupe is moving further out. But these stars here, they keep their formation. I think that's quite fascinating. All right, now let's look at Arcas, the son of Callisto. Let's see, where do we find him? There's Hydra and Centaur, and there he is, Bootis. So, as I said before, here we have the Big Dipper. If you're using the two stars over here, you get to the North Pole. And if you're following the line of these stars here, 
you will find this bright star. It's quite easy to find, just follow this line. It's the brightest one in the area, can't miss it. This one is called Octorus. It is a red giant. So it's in the last stages of its development. And again, we can see it's the brightest star in a constellation. Okay, let's see. Goes up here, then up to here. Neck down there. Yes, a brighter one, and back to Arcturus. And then here we have another set of stars. All right. Here's an illustration from 1782. <laughs> A dashing young man holding two dogs, and here's the Big Dipper or the mayor. And you can imagine him sort of running after the bears making sure to move around the pool. So like I said, there's one story that this is Arcas, the son of Callisto. But there's another story and that says he's Philomelos, the son of Yesion and Demeter. And it said that he was a farmer, poor farmer, but quite smart. And he developed the plow. And for his invention, his mother Demeter rewarded him with a place among the stars in the sky. It's a nice story. Right, and here we have the two dogs, Canis Venetici. Canis are the dogs. They're called Corcaroli and Mysteria. If you know a little bit of Latin, you might know Cor is the heart. It's the heart of Charles. It's right here. One, two. And this is a bit of a later invention. In fact, this was named Corcaroli in 1649. After Charles I, King of England. He also wanted a place among the stars. This one is also interesting. Corona Borealis. The brightest star, Gemma. Once you find it, it's really quite noticeable. Like a little half moon. It's called the Northern Crown. And in the 17th century, someone actually renamed all the constellations with Christian names and renamed this northern crown into the crown of thorns of Jesus Christ. But that didn't stick. It's still called the northern crown. 
This is interesting, it's also visible from the southern hemisphere. So, the Aborigines in Australia saw it upside down, of course, they're looking at it from this direction. And called it a boomerang because that's what it resembles. So I think that's quite interesting that obviously there's very different interpretations, but the constellation is really noticeable and people, different hemispheres, very different places have connected these stars. Alright, now there's one constellation left that I'd like to show you, and that's the dragon. Let's have a look where we find it. Ursa Minor, and here's Draco, 21, So here's some constellations we already know. Here is Polaris. And Ursa Minor. Here's a constellation we looked at last time. The constellation that is a room that looks a bit like a house. Cepheus. And down here we have the stars of the Big Dipper. Down here, just in the corner, is Bootes. And we want to have a look at what's here in between. Draco, the dragon. It's not a very bright constellation, but quite a large one. Let's see, where's the brightest star? Here. Thuban. Just up here and there. Down there, there's a little triangular. And back up Nautilus. Going down, sea bound, across, and up here. serpent moving around the northern stars. And historically, people saw this constellation as its wings. So this was one single constellation, but 
today, day or two. The dragon has lost its wings and here we have a little bear instead to keep Callisto company and move around the pole. If Draco is difficult to find when you're looking at the night sky, don't worry. This is not an easy one to see, but I'm sure you'll be able to find this one and identify the North Star. Hope you've enjoyed this and 